The leadership of the Senate this week denied reports that legislative action around the four tax reform bills forwarded to the National Assembly by President Bola Tinubu had been suspended. According to Senate President Godzilla Kwabio, further action on the bills have been put on hold to give time to a special Senate committee to resolve all outstanding issues around the bills. We are now being joined for a chat on these bills by Ademumi Emerua, the lead strategist at Gatefield and global policy and advocacy leader. Many thanks for joining us today, Ademumi. Hi, Adesua. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Now, you wrote an article online about the VAT and this new tax initiative by President Tinubu, but you claimed that the increase of the VAT in 2019 led to poorer economic outcomes for Nigerians, and that VAT remittance, if specified, can benefit certain sectors. So why are you advocating against um, the VAT increase? Um, so I, I think it's very clear, um, you know, we are talking about years of economic theory, um, the IMF, the OECD, um, Joseph Stiglitz, um, you're talking about Thomas Piketty. Everybody knows that VAT is inherently regressive. Um, the idea of VAT is as simple as this. You are essentially making consumers pay more. And the reason why governments use it as a measure is that it's easy to collect. It's not because, you know, there's something very special or, you know, deeply useful about the VAT. Um, interestingly, Nigeria introduced, you know, a 50% hike, and I like to do things by the numbers. Um, the number from 2020 to 2024, Q2 2024, shows that the economic growth on the average, you know, the revenue growth rather on the average, was about 30%. So when you look at it, you know, quarter by quarter and you compound it, the average growth, you know, in revenue was 30%. So the lies they tell you is that, you know, this VAT increase has led to revenue growth uh, for the government by over 100%, but that's really not true. And then when you see that the VAT increase was 50%, um, you also realize, and this becomes true, that the revenue is inflation driven, the kind of growth you're saying. The second thing is that the revenue growth is underwhelming because if you essentially you know, have a 50% VAT um, hike, then a 30% economic or revenue growth you know, means that you didn't even really meet the target. Um, another lie that has been told really is, you know, Benin Republic has a VAT of 18%. And so, you know, I ask people, what is the inflation rate of Benin Republic? 3%. Um, what is the interest rate of Benin Republic? 5%. And so, in Nigerian essentially has like an inflation difference with Benin Republic of 1,000%. So that means if Nigeria is 33% and Benin Republic is 3%, like a Nigerian pays 1,000% more for goods. So it's not comparative. You can't say that, you know, Benin is 18% and Nigeria is 7.5%. Um, it's, it's just not true. And that's the talking point that the administration has been parroting. Um, and then when you look at what are the numbers, this is really, really scary because the NBS just released a report. Um, Nigeria's household survey report. And it showed that more than half of Nigerians, about two thirds of Nigerians, over 60%, don't know where the ne their next meal is coming from. They are apprehensive about what to eat. So you are seeing that you know, the economy has damaged people so much that you know, more than 90 million Nigerians don't know where their next meal will come from. And I'm talking about government data. And you know the interesting thing about this data, it compares wave four and wave five, which means that between 2018 and 2019, and 2023 and 2024, the number of people who have gone into food poverty have more than doubled. And so that's the devastating outcome. You know, when people talk about, you know, revenue growth for the government, it's like growth for who? We have seen, you know, food inflation go to like 40%. And so, you know, you can't talk about revenue growth for the government in isolation and talk about, you know, people's lives being devastated. Um, another lie, you know, and it's very important to like look at the lies that this government has been telling is that you know, there's going to be a zero rating for basic food items. And it's very interesting when you think about what really drives the price of agriculture or food commodities in Nigeria. There are you know, many things. Um, about 60% of farm produce in Nigeria is lost due to post-harvest storage. 
And so it means that if you don't put you know, storage as a VAT exempt or you know, VAT zero rated VAT item, you're essentially not doing anything about reducing food cost. If you don't do anything about transportation, and the government, you know, they're very sneaky. They tell people when they're speaking publicly that you know, transportation has been removed, but what the bill says is shared passenger transport, which means that you know, you're entering a bus, you know, you're entering the rail, that's when you're like, you know, not paying VAT. But when you have to like truck things, the logistics of moving goods from Kano to Lagos, you know, has not been affected. And so all of the impute cost drivers of inflation has not been targeted by this bill. And the government is resorting to simplistic talking points. And it's really unacceptable. And so if we have seen that, I'm talking about years of economic data. There, um, my article points to empirical research by Nigerian and international institutions showing that there was a direct correlation between the VAT increase and the kind of poverty and decline in consumer spending, the government data supports this because Nigerians no longer can feed. You know, it is currently devastating. It is a double squeeze. You're essentially looking at interest rates at 27%, inflation rates at 33%. You know, and when you compare this with just any country that people try to compare, you know, Nigeria with on the VAT rating, whether it's Kenya, you know, whether it's South Africa, South Africa has, a, you know, about 5% inflation, you know, Kenya has about 6%. And so you cannot by any means, you know, talk about these countries in the context where Nigeria literally has like up to 1,000% increase in or difference in inflation between them. And so it's, you know, that's really the point to be made. Um, and so what we are saying here is that you cannot, you know, go back on years of economic theory and say that inflation will somehow, you know, lead to um, people being able to consume more. Um, it, um, you know, VAT is a regressive tax. Um, as a Nigerian, this is how I think about it. And I like to break this in like layperson terms. Right. Um, if I earn one million naira a month, right. And somebody earns like 100,000 Naira a month. We are paying VAT at the same amount, just exactly the same amount, which means you know, the share of your income that you, know, you spend becomes reduced. And this affects the service sector. But for the rich, maybe that difference can be absorbed, right? And so I don't think that we should be talking about at this time. And I don't want to like say that you know, VAT itself is completely bad. But the timing of it is you know, something that we shouldn't even contemplate at this point. All right, uh, Adil, me, I mean, I heard you loud and clear, uh, very clearly. Um, uh, uh, you spoke, to, you, 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 you've spoken to the um, article that you wrote. Uh, but uh, first, to clarify that the Senate has not uh, suspended the bills. Uh, the the president of the Senate, you know, made that clarification. Of course, a committee has been set up, but of course, he's saying that uh, the Senate will not be intimidated in any way, and they will proceed to do the needful. Uh, and Nigerians are waiting. So the bills are still in play. Uh, but my question to you directly will be, yes, I know what you have said about VAT uh, and why, even though you're saying that it's not that regress uh, uh, progressive, uh, why uh, now may not be the most ideal time uh, to uh, begin to tinker with it and hoping that it will grow from 7.5 to 10 or 15. Uh, I also know that at a point, uh, you mentioned the point about the fact that Nigeria existed for decades uh, before VAT. Okay, so VAT isn't the only component in all the four bills uh, that have been presented you know, to the National Assembly. Uh, what key areas do you think um, uh, are the strengths and the areas that you think, like the VAT, uh, that the Taiwo Loede Committee, and then the National Assembly in general, will need to either work on tweak, you know, or generally improve upon uh, so that the issues that you raise about the quality of living for Nigerians can be better addressed. So VAT is one yes, but then looking holistically at all the four bills, what are your thoughts on them? Okay, so I mean, I would want to make my point that I think that a tax strategy shouldn't really be first about immediate term revenue for the government. Um, taxation can be like a tool for economic maximization. And, you know, the interesting thing here is that if you get more Nigerians working, you are going to grow Nigeria's single largest, you know, income from tax pool, which is, you know, the, you know, personal income tax. Um, I think that we really need to take a look at, at that, because when you look at the context of what happened in Argentina, 
the you know, president is credited for reducing monthly inflation from 25% to 2%. And what did this person do? Like there's a case study, there's a template in front of us. This person essentially reduced taxes. And what they did was to lower the threshold for the personal income tax, which means you brought everybody into the tax net, you know, while ensuring that you, know, you reduce you know, the expenses of government. And this person essentially slashed so many federal programs that are not productive. And then for the first time in a decade, Argentina recorded a, a budget surplus. And so what you are seeing is a strategy mismatch. And why I don't like to like, you know, concentrate on, on the tax bill, bills is this just for itself. It is that you know, Taiwo Yedele is called the chairman on fiscal reforms, you know, and tax, and we are just obsessed with tax. You know, there needs to be a coordination with fiscal strategy and tax strategy. You're seeing a government that is profligate, a, a government that is wasteful, a government that spends so much money on needless things, a government that is bloating the bureaucracy, that is expanding government spending on, on productive things and you're essentially taxing people. It's not a coordinated strategy, to be honest. And then the only reason, and I will tell you this, I would support a VAT hike if they can tell me they are bringing inflation down to single digits. I would support it if they tell me that the interest rate is coming down. I would support it if I know that the government is spending my revenue on productive things, you know, not you know, 450 cars for Apabio's Senate and you know, the House of Representatives. It just doesn't make sense. And what you're saying is this government you know, enforcing a crippling austerity regime on Nigerians who are essentially like, you know, expanding their own pockets. Um, so when you have, you know, more essays, how many people are presidential spokespersons today? How many people are responsible for the president's image management? 12 people. And so when you're looking at these numbers, it's ridiculous for me to pay more while you're essentially saying my money is being transferred, you know, to these people who had no value to my life. Um, and so I can't have conversations about the tax strategy where it does not you know, um, have a correlation or alignment with a fiscal strategy um, that shows that Nigeria is going to work because of this. And so what you are seeing right now is that the government wants more money. And it always does that. When it raises minimum wage, it knows about the inflationary effects of that. And it knows that it has no money for it. About 14 states don't have money to pay minimum wage. And so who is going to pay for this bloated bureaucracy? The Nigerian people. You know, it's something that we shouldn't touch, we shouldn't discuss. I think there are opportunities, right? I think that, for example, you know, the consolidation of the tax, you know, could be like a meaningful thing. You know, but when you take that away, you're essentially saying the only thing that is good about this tax bill is that the government is optimizing its revenue collection. It is not good for Nigerians, you know, fundamentally. And so Nigerians have to come first. The concept of universal taxation is, you know, no taxation without representation. Nigerians are being represented badly. Unemployment numbers are crazy. And the government is essentially making, you know, bad policy because the arguments are faulty. For example, Nigeria says our unemployment numbers are less than the unemployment numbers in Canada, in the UK, in the European Union, which is completely a joke, you know. And so if you're making a policy, policy decision based on your flawed and faulty, you know, um, or misleading calculation of unemployment figures, then I can't trust any policy you're making. And so I'm not going to have a conversation about a tax bill isolated from, you know, a fiscal strategy that needs to work. And what are the opportunities? And I don't want to be this, you know, weird critic. I have given constructive pathways. One of the first things is other countries have used it, a differentiated VAT schedule. And what do we want to see? We want to see more taxes on things or VAT increasing on luxury items. You know, we want to see VAT increase on the things that are non-essential. You know, but Nigerians shouldn't pay more than they are paying now for anything because what you are doing is effectively making sure that the service industry dies, you know, and the signals are out, right? People are having these debates about companies living in Nigeria. They are working with robust and factual intelligence. And so when they are seeing the intelligence, they are seeing like, you know, consuming, um, you know, on the decline. If your country has 60% of its people unable to afford food, then they cannot afford Netflix. They cannot afford you know, to go to the cinema. And so when you're crippling all of the sectors that would essentially lift Nigeria's economy because you want to expand the revenue, then you are not serious. And that's why I would not have any debate. And you know, to Apabio, Apabio is literally a very unserious person. And well, to listen um, to a senior president talk well, about I, I, we don't care, we don't care about the people, I, I we don't mean, care about their consultation. Please let me speak. Yeah. Please let me speak. Well, if a senior president who is supposed to be representative, I was going of the to people, remind you that says that the people's time, opinion does not count. Okay, then yeah. it doesn't work. 
All yeah. right, Daddy Umi, well, uh, what I was going to do was to remind you about Thai, but I was also going to caution you to say that let's keep it civil, uh, even while we make our point. The other point that I thought would have been necessary would be to know from your thoughts what uh, Argentina got right that we are not getting right. But sadly, sadly, we have run out of time. And, but this is a discussion that we would like to have with you, uh, you know, some other time. Uh, thank you, Adeumi Emerua, for being with us on the morning show today.